Un Academy. Let's crack it. Un Academy. Let's crack it. <clears throat> okay, uh, see, this is, uh, uh, sorry, this is part three. This is part three of autonomic nervous system question answer explanation. Again, this part mostly contains drugs related to ANS. The previous part, part one, is about physiology of ANS. Part two includes medicinal chemistry and pharmacology. The continuation is part three. Let us look at the questions. Now, which of the following will show vasomotor reversal of Dale? Let us understand the concept of uh, uh, what is this Dale phenomenon is. Now, Dale said adrenergic drugs, like when you use epinephrine. Now, epinephrine will be acting on alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 2 receptors. Now, the effect on alpha 1 receptor is it causes vasoconstriction. What happens is it increases. So initially, a BP will be raised very much. Now, after that, slowly it will act on beta 2 receptor. The response on beta 2 is vasodilation. Smooth muscle dilation is there. So this reduces BP. So what Dale has said is when it, epinephrine or adrenaline is given, initially a sharp rise in BP is seen, and then slowly a decrease of BP is seen. This is what is called vaso uh, Dale phenomena. Now the question is, which of the following show vasomotor reversal of Dale? So what Dale said initially, a sharp hike in BP will be there. Now look at the options: phenytalamine followed by adrenaline. What is phenytalamine? Phenytalamine blocks alpha receptors. If phenytalamine blocking alpha receptor, vasoconstriction will not be there. Rise in BP will not be there. Phenytalamine followed by adrenaline. When you give adrenaline, these receptors are blocked, so this response will not be there. But beta-2 receptors will be there, so fall in BP will be there. So what happens in Dale phenomena? Initially, increased BP will be there, but here, decreased BP is there. This phenomenon is called as a reversal of BP. So this is caused by the combination of these drugs, phenytalamine followed by adrenaline. Whereas other one, propranolol followed by adrenaline, no. Propranolol blocks beta receptors. And it causes the kind of Dale phenomenon on initial increase of BP only. Again, phentalamine followed by noradrenaline. Now understand this. Noradrenaline activity is more against alpha than beta receptors. So beta 2 response on this vasodilation will not be there. So that is the reason why this is also wrong. Now propranolol followed by noradrenaline, again, this is wrong. Because propranolol block beta receptors, again, the phenomena will not be there. So the answer for this is option A. To answer this, you need to understand the physiological phenomena of Dale, Dale phenomena. So simple thing, you just remember about alpha 1 responses and beta 2 responses. This alpha 1 response increases BP. Alpha 2 response decreases BP. When you use an alpha blocker, this response will be there. So you see only decrease in BP. That is what is reversal of Dale phenomena. OK, let's move on to the next question. Alpha 2 agonist causes all of the following except. Again, see, the reason why I'm including except question is many of the competitive tests include this except question. Most of the students, due to the stress, they they miss this word. Now, alpha-2 agonist. Again, alpha-2 agonist are presynaptic receptors. They are present in CNS. There are multiple effects are there. Analgesia, pain relief. You know, we have seen tizanidine. Tizanidine causes analgesia, and which is acting at alpha-2 receptors. There are certain drugs which will cause sedation as well as anxiolysis. Anxiety will get reduced and it, that results in sedation. All the three are alpha-2 agonist response. And what is not? Hyperalgesia. See, algia means pain. Analgia means lack of pain. Hyperalgia means excess pain. So this is, this is not mediated by alpha-2 agonist. Alpha-2 agonist causes analgesic effects, sedation effect, anxiolytic effects. But the question asks, what is the except? So it will not cause hyper, hyperalgesia. So option B is the right answer. Let's move on to the next one. Which of the following is mixed alpha and beta agonist? Alpha action as well as beta action should be there. Now, dopamine, dopamine, only beta 
one action. Phenol dopam is dopamine agonist. Epinephrine is the answer. It acts on alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, and beta 2. Phenylephrine will be acting only at alpha 1. So all these three are selective agents. Mixed agent is epinephrine. It acts on both alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, and beta 2. See, all these are concept-based questions. You need to go through it again and again so that you will understand them well. OK? Now, next one. Now, which is not an endogenous catecholamine? Now, understand this one. A benzene ring with two adjacent OH groups is what called as catechol. OL indicates alcohol, catechol. And on this, if you have an amine side group, this is called as catecholamines. In the human body, there are certain neurotransmitters which are catecholamine derivatives like dopamine, uh, epinephrine, norepinephrine. All the three are adrenaline, noradrenaline. All the three are catecholamines. Now, dopamine, yes, endogenous catecholamine. Adrenaline, yes, noradrenaline, yes. What is not? Dobutamine. Dobutamine is not at all endogenous. And it is not catecholamine. It won't fit both the categories. No. Okay, so the option here is dopamine, not an endogenous catecholamine. Now, the next question norepinephrine action at the synaptic cleft is terminated by. Now, understand this one this is a, a, a neurotransmitter from where you see norepinephrine. Now, norepinephrine will be released, and this reason the space between a neuron. Another neuron, space between a neuron and another uh, peripheral organ is known as synaptic cleft. Now, whatever norepinephrine is released, the major action which is terminated is reuptake. It is taken back into the neuron. So norepinephrine action at synaptic cleft is terminated by metabolism by CUMT, no. Metabolism by monamine oxidase, no. Reuptake is the right answer. Metabolism by acetylcholine esters, no. This is, uh, this is for acetylcholine. For norepinephrine, it is reuptake. That is the reason why you have SNRs or the selective norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, which will block this and increases the levels of norepinephrine, noradrenaline, and used to treat depression. So this is a powerful mechanism by which uh, uh, the action is terminated. So the question is about that, and the answer is reuptake. See, COMT, MEO are present inside the cells. You have MEO inside this one, not outside. CVMT inside the cells, not outside. So, so only uh, the action by which noradrenaline is terminated is by reuptake. Now, let's move on to the next question. Now, which of the following is not true about adrenergic receptors? See, till now I have given except questions. This is about not true. See, I have highlighted it, but in the examination, it just comes like this. Student may miss this word, not. Now, look at this. Alpha-1 receptors are usually presynaptic. Now understand this thing. See, alpha-1 receptors, presynaptic receptors are alpha-2 receptors. Alpha-1 is present on blood vessels, which is postsynaptic. So this is not true. The remaining one, beta-1 receptors are predominantly found in heart, right? Noradrenaline stimulates beta-1 receptors, right? Alpha-2 receptor stimulation inhibits transmitter levels, right? If this is stimulated, it inhibits the biosynthesis of uh, noradrenaline. So not, which is not correct, is the first one, option A. You need to read carefully. See, during competitive exam, when you are in the examination, you need to pay attention to each and every word. OK? OK. <clears throat> now. All of the following are cardio selective beta blockers, except now you know we have cardio. See, usually it is given as beta 1 is cardio receptors, so beta 1 selective and non selective are there. Selective, non selective are there. See, always you need to remember this list selective and non selective. One. See, selective one, remember A, B's alphabets, etinolol, etinolol, acebutolol, acebutolol. Uh, bisoprolol, betoxalol, 2 A's, 2 B's, metoprolol, esmolol. You know, we read about ADME like this is this is ABME. All of them are selective drugs. 
whereas non selective you have a different list propranolol propranolol it is a non selective one pindolol pindolol is again another heterocycle ring containing beta blocker indole is there that's why it is called as pindo indole is there nadolol timolol all of them are non selective always you need to remember this list so we all of the following are cardio selective drugs beta beta blockers except etanolol selective esmolol selective bisoprolol selective propranolol is non selective so instead of asking about non selective there is a tag as except so the option d is right answer now the next one propranolol is contraindicated in diabetes mellitus because now understand this question this is a concept oriented question now in diabetes mellitus to treat that certain people take insulin now what is the effect of insulin whenever insulin is given all the glucose which is present in the blood gets into the cells so if insulin dose is increased or after taking insulin if 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 someone has not taken food it causes hypoglycemia hypoglycemia means decreased levels of glucose in the blood now hypoglycemia is dangerous because brain is not getting enough glucose now hypoglycemia the symptoms are sweating increase in heart rate so this is the background theory diabetes mellitus now propranolol should not be given why why because propranolol blocks heart rate increase in heart rate responses so it masks the symptoms of hypoglycemic uh, hypoglycemic condition now look at the options causes hyperglycemia no causes seizures no masks hypoglycemic symptom this is the right answer this is what i have to see in palpitation will be there increase in heart rate uh, someone may be aware aware of his own heart beat is called as palpitation that condition may be there and that is masked because you are taking propranolol which blocks beta receptors so heart rate increase will not be there causes hypertension no this is also not specifically they are asking about diabetes mellitus the problem is this one see that may result in diabetic coma also hypoglycemic shock it is considered as a shock so option d option i'm sorry option c is right answer here next one now drug of choice for bradycardia due to beta blocker overdose beta blocker overdose what happens is see beta receptors are completely blocked overdose means the receptors are completely blocked so you cannot use dopamine it cannot be used adrenaline you cannot use isoprenaline is, is also not the choice only the drug can be used is atropine atropine is drug of choice to treat bradycardia now understand this one this question is given in i think rajasthan drug inspector uh, paper or somewhere in the question uh, in the answer key they have given dopamine as an option because uh, because uh, uh, beta blocker overdose is there dopamine is beta 1 agonist but later key is corrected to atropine the reason is when the receptors are blocked dopamine will not work when the receptors are blocked adrenaline isoprenal all of them look at this they are all they all have to work on beta 1 receptor and in overdose all the receptors are blocked so it cannot work so only option is atropine atropine is drug of choice to treat beta blocker overdose okay now key correction is required here key given as uh, document but again it is corrected as uh, atropine so the answer for this is atropine understand the logic behind this beta blocker overdose all these drugs will be acting on beta 1 receptors which is completely blocked by beta blocker overdose so they cannot act only drug which can act is atropine now alpha 1 adrenergic blocker providing symptomatic relief for benign prostatic hyperplasia now look at the drugs all of the drugs are alpha 1 blockers but selectively the drug which is used to treat benign prostatic hyperplasia is tamsulosin prazosin is used to treat hypertension prazosin doxycycline tolazolin uh, fentolamine are non selective blockers they are used in pheochromocytoma not in any other disease it's only used in pheochromocytoma so here to relieve symptomatic relief is by tamsulosin so option a is the right answer okay so this is about uh, 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 this set yeah any 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 doubts are there in this in this part <coughs> so don't worry i will upload this thing uh,
this video will be available i'll make, make it into three parts and then upload it in the in the channel also but understand see in the key i have given this one but the real answer is this one see see whenever i conduct a test and then upload a, a key uh, please do involve in discussions so today today finally i could see some discussion going on someone i think hama or someone has uploaded a question so you have got uh, answers are coming from different people that is a good practice ante oka question edana upload ayi daniki answer enti ani evaraina adigi multiple answers vaste you think about it meeru meek teliyipoyina google ki elthaaru check chestaru you will get an academy let's crack it